Welcome to the Rocket Mountain Prepper. My name is Wyatt, and today we'll be going over the TYT or TTERRA MD UV380. Uh, it has the same exact uh, accessories, same exact battery, same exact size as the MD380. UV indicates it's a VHF and UHF model. Um, the box is right here. So, Specs on it for the UV380. It's a DMR radio, same as the 380. Uh, so here you got your output power, digital mode, all that, all that fun jazz. The receiver, and then the general information, audio output. So it's a mobile speaker, lithium ion battery, up to 3,000 channels. I maybe might have right around 100 in here. Uh, is the same box as the, uh, just about any of the other TYT radios. So, uh, and there's another tag for it. it. There's contact info, functionality, applying for film rule tier 1, tier 2, applying for digital protocols, GPS. I'm pretty sure this one doesn't have a, model, a GPS in it, but I've heard that you can add one to it. Don't quote me on it. But, yeah. All in all, it's a very nice little radio, just like most other Chinese radios, it uses uh, Baofeng accessories, uh, it's an exact pin connector, uh, that one's the transmit, that one's the receive, it's backwards, I know, from most American stuff, like the, what some of us may have used one time or another, the CP200, where the top one is uh, the speaker and the bottom one is the transmit mic piece, so yeah. Size, like I said, it's really small compared to my XTS 2500. Uh, this is UHF, uh, way shorter, way thinner, and way uh, smaller in, in the uh, how bad it sticks out. And it's very, very, very light. It, I, I like it. Uh, I can wear this comfortably, and sometimes I even forget I have it on. Until I hear it start squawking, I'm like, where's my radio? Oh, it's right there. It's got a channel knob, which is something I really like. Volume knob, pretty good. Uh, something I should note about it is it's an SMA male, an SMA female. So backwards from just about everything else you might have played with. Um, on the side, it, it works kind of like the Motorola for the buttons. Uh, push talk, programmable and programmable. This one up here is high, medium, low power. Uh, this one here, monitor, so it opens up the squelch. Uh, battery, very low battery. It is a 2000 milliamp, 7.4 volts, 14.8 watt hours. Uh, there's the CE on the recycle, don't throw away all the warnings. And then there's your tags for the radio itself. You got the FCC there. Serial number. So yeah, the uh, button's right there. It, it's a drop in there. There's a couple locks right there that hold it in place. Uh, screws for the uh, antenna or the battery clip. And uh, I still have the screen protector on it. I like to keep these on as long as I can just because it keeps it from getting scratched. Full DTMF. Uh, if you've used the ABCD format in in military or in a wildland radio, it's A, B, C, D. I don't know why they didn't just go A, B, C, D, but eh, such is life. Uh, I got my own tag on it because I travel a lot, and if I drop it and they see that, they can type my call sign into Google, find my email address, contact me, be like, hey, we have this, come get it, please. Uh, the mic for it, it it represents a Motorola RSM, just a little bit smaller. Um, I had a Motorola RSM. Like, Motorola one's a little bit bigger. It's got the same deal. Uh, little side things for an earpiece. Clip, but it's a little bit smaller. Cable lengths are relatively the same length. Motorola's cable is a little bit more heavy duty.
uh, I've used this quarter wave I bought off of Amazon, pretty sure, uh, just for the better range quality. I got one that's a full 136, 174, and 400, 480, because in case something happens, I need to use those. I don't want to fry an antenna or the radio. So let's turn it on. Power noise is changeable, but if you do that, uh, you won't hear your, your DTMF buttons being pushed. So yeah, I have it customized to say why at KF0HWV on it for my name and my ham call sign. You can customize it. Uh, I don't remember. It's 10. You can only have 10 uh, letters or letters, numbers, whatever per line, and there's only two lines you get. When you first buy it, it's just going to display TYT on it like this, but instead of it being white, it's going to be black. Um, you can also do charge string, which just does a bunch of lines. Uh, you got you got dual monitor, so I can have an analog here, a digital here, both digital, both analog, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that. You got, you got your signal strength, high power, repeater, direct mode indicator, minus means negative offset repeater. Plus positive offset. Uh, wrong button. There's direct mode. You got your battery indicator, your channel numbers. Uh, little transmit receive indicator there. You got your date and your time. It goes day, month, year because, well, this is Chinese radio and they operate on that. Your menu, uh, it expands when you go into digital mode. Uh, I got way more things, so messages, you can send text message. I don't use it that much. Your contacts, uh, I just have the talk groups. I'm not sure if I set that up wrong. Call log will record both analog and digital, but one thing you might want to know is if I were to go here, KF0HWV testing, no response needed. Yeah, there's literally no one in my area, so no one ever probably ever heard that, but if you go here, Call log, record, it'll indicate as receive. It does that for analog stuff and it drives me crazy. It'll show your time, your date, how long the recording was, time, date, source ID, and destination ID will both be zeros because it was an analog. If I were to play it, It still sounds like DMR, even though it's analog, which, whatever. Then I got pretty good directory because I've used it a lot. This would be if you're, like, getting a direct call or something. I don't know much about that. Scan list is a little dumb, I've noticed. I wonder what that was about. Anyway. For some weird reason, this fire dispatch channel... Yeah, excuse me. Uh, this fire dispatch channel, I have it set up for no transmit. And it's in direct mode, so whatever. But the only, but now I can get into scan, but if I were on, like, say, this part 90 frequency I'm authorized to use, uh, and it won't go into it. And then that was just some testing. And then the zones... And go here at the new zone zone list get it then from there you can channel list i'll show you what all there is you can delete add channel the weird thing about adding channels is for if you're doing this via the front panel or fpp you have to do add channel analog or digital you can't go in between them you type in the name oh okay channel zero and then you receive and your transmit and it'll get saved then from there, you then you go to your zone, zone list. Decide whatever you want to add it to. A and B are separate, so you can have like 16 here and 16 here. Have up to 32. Uh, I don't think it's actually 16 per zone. I'll have to check. Then if you go there, then the bottom one will always be the newest one you added. Top one being the first one ever added in your group. Uh, it says like 16 and an S on the top. Uh, I can rotate this a full 360. Doesn't matter. Like oh, it could show up like a nine here, and it could be an uh, a one uh, for the actual channel. It really doesn't matter. 
Um, if we were to go here, I don't have anything I can transmit on that. But let's say this is here. This will be the frequency you transmit on. And there we were getting a little bit of feedback because I'm, I can barely hit the repeater from where I'm at. But if someone were to key up on this one, this Craig one, and uh, I was listening to this, it would show like the group. It, it would show what talk group it's on and the uh, radio ID that sent it. But if I'm here, it'll do, just do a green A up there. Like, yeah. we'll go here. It'll show that green A for a hot second, however long it does it here. And like, it'll do that. Just show the green A if I'm just there, but if I'm listening here, it'll show a green A as well. To enable the uh, dual listen, you push this button, and it'll lock that out. You can't accidentally go there. So, yeah, uh, all in all, it's a nice little radio. I got this for $99, so 100 from buy2wayradios.com. If you're going to program this from a company like buy 2 Radio, since they do a bunch of Part 90 stuff, um, it's locked down. You get... 146 to 174, 400 to 420, and then from 450 up to 480. It has the ham stuff locked out and the DMR. So, on trick, if you hold a couple buttons and turn it up on at the same time, it'll unlock it. The drivers for this, Windows has a hard time with them. You can, I'm pretty sure now you can get the drivers on TYT's website, which is tytaa8.com. Under downloads, you can get that and the CPS for this. It'll say, like CPS for MD UV380, and that'll work for both the UV380 and a regular 380, whether it be VHF or UHF. When you read the radio, it'll auto detect it. And I'm not, I haven't tried putting a VHF only uh, code plug on a dual bander or anything like that. And probably won't because dual band or nothing for me. Uh, the battery connector is a very nice battery con connector. Oh, drop in charger. Drop in red for charging, green for in standby or fully charged. Uh, this thing is very. This is a very bright light. Like I. I can't go to bed with this thing charging because it'll turn green and I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep. Uh, for the cord, it's uh, just a standard two prong AC adapter. Input is 100 to 260 volts. Alternating current, 50 to 60 hertz. Uh, output is 12.5, indoor use only, blah, blah, blah. FCC made in China, all that good jazz. Uh, on here, input 12.5, output 8.4, 450, 450 milliamp hours. Uh, I don't know if that means it's good for those batteries or not. There's the CE, the don't throw away, charging complete, the TYT logo. It's cheap plastic, like cheap Chinese plastic, but it does pretty good. And it's just like that. And so, yeah. This radio, all in all, I really like it. I had a battle thing once. Uh, it was, I got a faulty one. It was cheap. It was crummy. Uh, I mostly used the battle thing for receiving only. And because uh, I didn't have my ham license back then, but now that I have my ham stuff. Oh, and this radio is part 90 and part 90 set when certified, so you can have part 90 stuff in here. A little thing I'm going to say just so people know uh, if you're using a frequency you're authorized to use not authorized to program I have my own thoughts on that my the way I think is if you can program it your boss won't get mad at you for doing it and you're not causing any interference what's the big deal FCC sees things different so for this frequency I can transmit which yeah everyone has their own thoughts on that that's my opinion you can have your own. I'm not going to hate you for it. Please don't hate me for my opinion. So, yeah. Uh, there's my review of the TYT MDUV380. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've covered all the bases. So, yeah. Have a good one.